Hey everybody, this is MalwareMorn09, and today you are checking out our MLB 13 The Show impressions, and today I have a very, a very special guest with me today. Why don't you tell who you are to the audience? Hey guys, it's uh, B-Wildcat2 here, and by now I hope you guys know who I am, but if you don't, um, I do uh, sports commentating uh, as well on my channel, uh, NCAA, MLB, Madden, all the like NBA, all that's good stuff. So if you haven't already, come and check out my channel. And, uh, well, Maurer, let's get this going. All right. So basically what I have Wildcat on here today to talk about is the impression so far on MLB The Show. It's been out for about not really a month, about three weeks. Uh, Wildcat, I just wanted to know, what are your main impressions so far as far as gameplay goes? How are you liking the gameplay right now? Um, well, um, it's definitely better than MLB 12, I'll give them that. Uh, I mean, it's not perfect, but it's a whole lot better than MLB 12 I ever saw today to be, at least in my opinion. I mean, it's not perfect. Uh, obviously, when, with the new update that they have uh, released, uh, they've fixed a lot of the issues that people were talking about uh, as far as, uh, like, the meatball for the first pitch and road to the show, and uh, there were some other things that... I didn't encounter, but others said that they had encountered. So they've they've done a good job of keeping on top of things and um, fixing issues and glitches. And uh, it's 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 really fun to play this year. Uh, just getting into all the modes that they have to offer this year. It's almost like if you wanted to do a mode, uh, like a series on YouTube for every mode in this game, you would run out of time before you got into every mode. <laughs> practically, it's it's there's a lot to a lot to do this year in MLB 13, the show. Yeah, right now I'm definitely liking hitting a lot better already. I mean, I use the Twins. It's kind of hard to win with that team regardless unless you go back into a, like a previous version of the game. But I like the hitting so far. Uh, they talked about, I think, revamped ball physics, so you get more realistic bounces. You don't get as many ground rule doubles. But it's nice when you're able to get a more realistic feel to the game. I mean, it's already, like, one of the most realistic sports games around today, but I mean, when there's room for improvement, you got to take advantage, and they've done that each and every year. So, oh, definitely. basically, I like the game. I think the gameplay has definitely improved so far, but why don't we take it to the next subject, and that is Road to the Show. What are your impressions so far on the new, basic, like, third person type view? Oh, um, I think actually it's more of a like a first person oh, first. type of view this year. Uh, but it's all right. Um, I like it. It's really cool. Um, I mean, when you hit a home run in um, in your road of the show, it, unless it's like a no doubter, you're you're following the ball and sprinting to first base, and you don't have the announcers unless you do something like after after your at bat, you don't have to listen to the announcers. It's just you hear the crowd cheering, the umpire saying. Uh, that's a ball, and uh, you got the the uh, the cleats in the ground when you're running. You've got the ball on the bat. Uh, just it makes you feel like you're actually playing as the character instead of like you're just pressing a button on a controller. It's it's really in, in depth this year, and I think they did a really good job of making it more first person oriented instead of just I'm playing as this guy, but it's almost like I'm playing. Uh, with the controller and and I'm not even like getting the same experience so yeah it's nice when you basically kind of take a trip into what exactly a player is experiencing throughout the game you get to hear all the realistic field sounds and it's I, it's pretty nice when you just get to experience a baseball game and you don't have to view it as from a viewer spec viewers like a broadcast viewpoint. perspective yeah it, it's nice when you get to basically be the player because there's so many other modes where you're basically it's a broadcast view it's nice when a mode about your player is actually about your player and not controlling that player you're literally you feel like you are the guy now because you get to experience everything that goes on around you so yeah i i like home i like uh rose the show this year it, it's definitely way better than last year i don't know how much more on field improvement there is i still think 
you can get more improvement off the field, make it more like 2K. But I guess we'll see what happens in the future. PS4 is Definitely. coming out next year. So I guess we'll see what exactly goes on for improvements next year. And anyway, oh, definitely. moving on and to our... What they, oh, what, they, uh, what, they, what they take out of uh, presentation in Road to the Show, if you will, like they take out some of the broadcast perspective, like uh, making it feel more like first person, but what they take out of that mode, they add into uh, the other modes, the franchise, the postseason mode. They have definitely improved their uh, presentation for those modes as well, so... And I think we're going to talk about them here in just a few minutes, too. So, Yeah, so another one I wanted to touch base on, it, we haven't really been able to experience it yet, but just going down the list as I'm looking at the menu right now is uh, the show live. That was a new feature that I know a lot of people were pretty excited about because basically what you can do now is follow a season or follow a team throughout the season now, and you get to basically control that team as it is that day you get the exact same lineups the exact same pitching rotation and you have presentation that basically follows a team that year it gives you realistic standing updates it tells you what the team did that year it gets you into the season without actually having to play a season it lets you it's not necessarily a franchise but it lets you experience what the team is going through that year. And I remember, I think it was NBA Live 10 was basically one of the first modes to do that with the NBA Live 365. It gave you the dynamic roster updates every day, and you got to go through and play a game with lineups that were realistic to that day, with players realistic to that day. And it was a mode that was a breakthrough, and it really lets you experience a franchise type feel without actually having to go through a franchise and having to make all the moves they're done for you. So what are your thoughts on the mode? Um, I haven't played it a lot this, uh, this year I've been, uh, playing road to the show and franchise more. Uh, uh, unfortunately I just, uh, like I want to get involved, but I think that, uh, the show live, it would be, it's a whole lot better if you wait until actual baseball's going on to start playing the show live mode because the mode is meant to be like, oh, let's say, oh, I don't know, um, Derek Holland like throws a no-hitter or something, and I, I want to have like the same lineups from that day, and then if I want to do a video about it, like telling about my thoughts, I could just go into the show live, pick, uh, pick that game from that date, um, start playing, and try to recreate my history myself or whatever. So I think it's definitely a much like – I it reminds me of the NBA today mode, like you were talking about in, uh, in NBA live, but, uh, in two K series, they've got the NBA today mode, which is basically almost like the same thing, but I think it's going to be a whole more, whole lot more fun to play once we actually have baseball going on. And you think about it, we're, we're not that far away from baseball now. So it'll be probably be played a lot more, uh, once the season gets underway and into the, uh, summer heat and the dog days of summer and all that good stuff. So, yeah, definitely a uh, great and great uh, addition this year. Many great additions this year. But anyway, moving on, we're gonna go to uh, franchise mode now. And basically, I haven't been able to play franchise mode yet. I'm waiting for the Operation Sports rosters. In fact, I'm working on them. Just got them finished up. And we are waiting for the final product to be put out, and I will start a franchise at that point. But basically, I wanted to know, have you tried out anything in franchise, a new budget system this year? Uh, basically, what are your hopes for this year, and what can we expect from you for the future in franchise mode? Um, for franchise, I've, I've, got, I've been playing it just to test it out. I uh, I obviously like I haven't gotten too far I haven't gotten to test out the new budget system but the improved scouting this year it's it's a whole lot more uh, it's a whole lot different and a whole lot more better or a whole lot better excuse me uh, than it was last year because now instead of assigning let's say a whole group of third basemen to do sprints say oh I want Mike Olt to do sprints and I want the rest to do um, fielding like you get to go in and sign scouts 
or scouting, uh, or not scouting. That's uh, training, actually. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've been talking about something, something completely different. But anyway, you get to do uh, drills and training uh, individually this year instead of um, just by uh, just having the whole group, if you will. And then the scouting, I haven't really gotten into scouting too much. Uh, I'm not far enough to scout like uh, any players for the upcoming draft or anything, but I'm sure that once I get into that, it'll probably be a great addition too. So I, I have real high hopes for uh, franchise mode this year. I haven't played it enough to obviously get a, get a good feel for it, um, so I'm not the right person to ask that question. But um, I've watched some videos where franchise – uh, they get their franchises to like 2019, 2020 because they sim a lot. So I think the uh, budget system is definitely a big improvement this year as well. So. Yeah, basically, I, I haven't gotten a chance to play it. I didn't really feel like trying it out right now. I just wanted to wait until the rosters were done and then dive into it and get to experience what we have in store for the mode. But anyway... I'm probably going to end up doing a Twins franchise, it looks like. I worked on the rosters for the Twins, and I definitely want to get to use my work. It would be nice. <laughs> but um, from my understanding, I believe they got rid of pricing this year for concessions and stuff like that. And definitely... Darn. The... <laughs> I, I always liked ripping off the fans for and making them pay $12 for a soda. Yeah, making the over... Giving realistic over price things at Target Field, such as $8 beer, $30 upper deck tickets, I don't know, but whatever. Yeah, that, I thought that was always fun. They've had that for a long time, and I'm actually kind of sad to see that go now, so. Yeah, but it's nice when you get to, if, if maybe you have a position where one guy is a power hitter, but the other isn't, you don't have to necessarily have that whole position going and hit for power, go lift weights or whatever if you have one guy who isn't a power hitter you have a second baseman possibly maybe brandon phillips who could hit 20 home runs in a year but you have the backup i don't know joe schmo who's, who's a utility guy hits maybe two home runs a year you don't have to go waste a weightlifting point on that guy now you can just individually put oh well i want him to wait i want him to go lift weights and then I want him to go work on his contact hitting ability. It, it's definitely improved from last year. You get a better feel to progressing your players, and then that way they're not working on unrealistic skills. But uh, Yeah, I've got a perfect example for your uh, scenario there. Uh, Ian Kinsler has been known for power hitting, and he's the second baseman. But the backup, or if you will, behind him in AAA is uh, Jerks and Profar. He is a really renowned uh prospect in the Rangers organization and he is not a power hitter so let's say I'm going to have Profar uh, go lift weights and try to get his power numbers up but I want Kinsler to focus on his base running because he still needs to uh, like he needs to get his speed up a little bit like you could do that now this year instead of having Kinsler, Profar and everybody else go lift weights so yeah I guess another example I could bring up is Joe Maurer uh, we have Ryan Domit who is basically the backup catcher, but I guess if you wanted to use a different example, we also have Drew Butera, not obviously known for his hitting abilities, known more for his fielding. So I don't have to go in and say, Mauer, I want you to go work on your hitting just to keep your contact uh, rating steady. And then I could have Butera, who's never going to hit probably over 250. I can just have him go work on his fielding. Which is nice because I don't want to improve a guy at a position or at a area that he's never going to be good at. It's it's nice when you can just pick your area that you want to improve and you can go there. It's nice that you're not, I guess, basically doing what you don't want to do. So anyway, yeah. I'm excited to see what else it has in store. I didn't get a chance to look at player progression yet. I'd heard something about player progression. Definitely the more older you get, the progression drops for you. I've seen examples where guys like David Ortiz went from 80s at the beginning of the year to like low 60s at the end of the year. So I guess we'll have to see how that plays out. 
I know another thing I was looking at when I went into franchise when I was snooping around for first time didn't get to play anything, but I saw the awards this year. Those have been revamped, and you now have a Silver Slugger award for every position. There's not just one Silver Slugger award this year. You give a Silver Slugger award to three outfielders, and then you get one to every infield position too. So I thought that was a pretty cool addition. And then another one another one I saw that was cool that I think most people heard about was the ability to be able to see the past three winners of that award. So you can go in to the award screen and you can see who was a silver slugger catcher 2012, 2011, 2010. And as every year progresses, you get to see that previous winner. So there's, it's not like the awards mean nothing. You get to see what exactly that person did. But I'd like, yeah. I'd like if they did something like 2K did, because I once sadly owned a 2K baseball game. Um, I think they keep track of their awards. So it'll be nice if one day MLB The Show has an option, maybe in franchise mode, where on your player card you get to see how many awards or so or how many titles you've been given for that certain player. I think that would really help out the cause. Because uh, when you want to, when you want an award, you don't want it to just be a one-year thing. You want that to be with that player throughout his career. And then when he retires, you want to know what he was known for throughout his career. So, anything yeah. else you have to say about franchise? Um, I haven't gotten too far into it, but I think uh, you're going to talk about awards. I looked at the All-Star voting, and I I don't know if this is new or not, but I noticed that. They not only have the Major League Baseball All-Star voting, but they now have the Minor League All-Star voting as well. I think so I, I like I, I never noticed it before, but I I didn't know if it was new or not. But I think Minor League voting has been in there before. I think. Well, I'm I'm just now noticing it, so <laughs> it's new for me at least. I think I think the only reason I ever would notice it is for Road to the Show, although I don't even know. My guy's always sucked in the minors, and then when he gets to the majors, he's done good. So. Yeah, but um, I guess anyway, if that's all you have to say, let's go down the list and we're moving to the postseason mode. That's a mode that I definitely have played a lot so far. I've gotten, when I've gotten bored of making rosters, I go and play a few games with my twins. I don't know how I've advanced as far as I have, but I know one series or one postseason mode that I'm playing right now, I've advanced all the way to the World Series. I still haven't played a game in there yet because I had roster work to do, but um, I'm really liking the new postseason presentation. It, it's a huge leap forward from last year. I remember last year, it seemed like there was just one celebration for every time you advanced onto a new series. Now you have the authentic um, field field markers, field logos, whatever mm-hmm. you want to call them. Then you have the new presentation that gives you realistic feel. You get to hear the national anthem before the games. You get the players being introduced onto the field, and you have them running onto the field too. So, I mean, the presentation all ties in with the postseason mode. So it gives you a more realistic feel. And another thing is the crowd was revamped. Uh, from what I understand, actual crowd noise was taken from the World Series home games and I think that's a cool touch but uh, what do you think so far of postseason mode? Well yeah like you said um, I've been playing it a lot too Um, I think the best like one of the better parts about it is that uh, for someone like Maurer here who's twins let's just say they're not the best team in the (laughs) AL Central (laughs) And they they might not have a realistic chance of ever making it to the postseason or well not making it to the postseason but like not making it for maybe well, a few years or so. We, we can but, get, we can give it that they won't advance in a series because they haven't advanced in a series since like 2002 when they went to the ALCS. I think they've been swept in the first round like every time since. Yeah, and anyway now now someone like Maurer can see his twins playing, I don't know, oh, well, let's say the Chicago Cubs in the World Series because you have the ability to pick and choose 
teams that uh, in different mo- matchups, and you can place them anywhere in the postseason bracket that you want. So you could give the Astros an AL buy if you wanted to. I don't know <laughs> who would do that except maybe an Astros fan, but if you wanted to, you can do that now. And I mean, that's that gives you pretty um, some pretty weird matchups. And I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I am uh, currently uh, in the process of simulating uh, the 1994 postseason. If if it had uh, gone underway, what would have happened? So I think it's a pretty cool addition uh, that you can choose any teams and place them anywhere if you will. Now, if I had to suggest one thing to change, I would ask that if they if they could change the so that you didn't absolutely have to have the two wild card teams. Now you could like pick and choose between whether you wanted one wild card or two team or two wild cards. Uh, like in the case of where I'm concerned, where you're like you're recreating a, pre- a past postseason and trying to redo it, if you will. 